reported bird strike occurred in 1905. The pilot was Orville Wright. And aircraft have been colliding with birds ever since. Every year, thousands of bird strikes occur. From January to August in 2021, there have been about 40 per day reported for civil aircraft in the United States alone. While most of these occurrences result in relatively minor aircraft damage, some result in significant damage, and occasionally the results are catastrophic. Most of us will remember the miracle on the Hudson in 2009, where an airliner was forced to land in the Hudson River after ingesting Canada geese into its engines. Perhaps it spews three birds. While events like this are rare, bird strikes which result in forced landings are not as infrequent as we may imagine. Bird strikes are on the rise, but why? One obvious reason is that aviation is a rapidly growing global industry. The FAA alone handles more than 45,000 flights each day. That's more than 16 million a year. But perhaps a lesser known fact is that the populations of most medium and large bird species are also increasing. Populations of large birds such as Canada geese and turkey vultures have increased by well over 100% in the past 30 years. And populations of medium-sized birds, like red-tailed hawks and mallards, have grown by over 50% during the same period. So where do most bird strikes occur? The answer is dependent upon whether you're flying fixed wing or rotary wing aircraft. But no matter what the aircraft is, the vast majority of strikes, over 70%, occur below 500 feet. Of course, for fixed wing aircraft, they are typically taking off or landing when they are this low. So it's no surprise that they experience bird strikes most frequently. In fact, over 90% of the time during these two phases of flight. But for rotary wing aircraft, the story is quite different. First, many helicopters are often operating in this bird-rich environment at or below 500 feet, and not only during takeoff and landing, but for extended periods of time in cruise flight. And because high airspeed makes it more difficult for the birds to avoid the aircraft and the pilot to avoid the bird, this is where the vast majority, two-thirds, of bird strikes occur with helicopters. Low altitude, high speed, cruise flight. What can pilots do to improve this situation? First of all, fly as high as possible. For every 1,000 foot increase in altitude above 500 feet, there is a 32% reduction in the risk of a bird strike. Also, help birds see you coming. Fly with your landing lights on. Of course, the value of this increases as your altitude decreases, and on partly cloudy days, use a two hertz pulse light if equipped. And because more than three quarters of bird strikes occur with air speeds above 80 knots, slow down when it's practical. This is especially useful when below 500 feet or in areas of known bird activity. Birds are often able to remain clear of slower moving aircraft. Additionally, if an impact seems imminent, climb if possible, because most birds will break downward to escape if they recognize an impact is likely. And finally, perhaps most importantly, report all strikes or near strikes that have a negative impact upon flight to help improve our knowledge of bird behavior. While it is unknown precisely how many bird encounters go unreported, it may be as high as 50%. In my personal opinion, I think it's even higher. Scientists and wildlife biologists like me play a crucial role in the understanding and management of wildlife in and around airports and in all airspace we share with our feathered brethren. Please help us help you. We need timely and accurate data. The information you provide allows airworthiness standards to be evaluated, mitigation strategies to evolve, and for the development of new technologies like bird detecting radar and aircraft lighting schemes to enhance a bird's ability to see and avoid aircraft. The volume of airspace we share is finite, but the number of aircraft and large birds occupying this space is increasing. So please continue to educate yourself and remain vigilant. We all must work together to improve the separation of birds from aircraft.